Hello, hi, this is Dr. Karen Perez with a video on bacteria vaginosis. Now, in this video, we're going to cover what is the cause of bacteria vaginosis? Who is at risk? What is the treatment? What lab, um, lab um, test would be done to identify BV? And what treatment you'd give the patient? So let's dive in. So what is BV? Bacterial vaginosis, sometimes you'll hear people call it bacterial vaginitis. So this is caused by an overgrowth of anaerobic bacteria in the vagina. So the vagina has a um, bacteria that's called the lactobacillus, which is normal in the vagina. With someone with bacterial vaginosis, this normal flora is replaced by mycoplasma homins or the garnerella vaginalis bacteria. So here you have a normal bacteria as in uh, this section here. And then you will see as it progresses, the lactobacillus bacteria start diminishing and you have the gonorrhea vaginalis bacteria or it could be mycoplasma um, hominis bacteria that is overcrowded or overcrowd the vaginal area. So what are the risk factors? The risk factors are um, sexually active women. Um, it may co-infect with other um, with STI, but keep in mind, this is not a sexual transmitted disease. Duchenne can cause it, African-American descent, individual that use IUDs, um, and individual who has a new sex partner or who have multiple sex partners. So as for the assessment, you are going to, um, the patient may complain of malodorous vaginal discharge that has me has a fishy odor. Um, primarily, they'll smell this scent uh, after sex or before the menstrual period. Itching and burning are not usually present unless there is a co-infection with other pathogen. If there is some irritability to the vaginal area, that may be due to the, um, the discharge that's coming from the vagina. So on examination, what the practitioner may find is a presence of a lot of homogeneous um, discharge. On speculum examination, they may find coating of the vaginal wall, foul, fishy odor. The cervix, whenever they do the cervix examination, there's no inflammation, so there may not be any kind of motion tenderness uh, with someone who have bacterial vaginosis. So the lab test, what they'll do, they'll do a wet smear, they'll do a whiff test, they'll do also test the vaginal pH. So for the wet smear clute cell test, as you can see that this is what the normal vaginal epithelial cell will may look like. Someone that has the BV bacteria vaginosis, you'll see an overcrowding um, of the bacteria. So with the sweat smear test, the clue cells are, are, there's a lot of clue cells and very few white blood cells. So in that, most of the time it's a gram negative, anaerobic rod shaped bacteria. The clues for the clue cell is made up of squamous epithelial cells with a large amount of bacteria coating the surface. That what it does, it liberates the edge of the uh, the squamous epithelial cells. So if you should see this, this is what, if someone has BV, which is bacterial vaginosis, you will see this, the overcrowding of the bacteria um, in the area. So the next test that would be done is what we call a whiff test. So with this, you will get the specimen or the secretion from the patient. There would be a glass slide. This is how the test is done. Then they drop potassium on the secretion and what it will give, it will give an odor, a strong fish-like odor or fishy-like odor will be released. And this is indicative of someone having bacteria vaginosis. Another test that will be done is testing, testing the pH 
of the vagina. So the normal pH of the vagina is uh, 4 to 4.5, which is good. However, when the pH in the, the vagina gets higher, meaning it's more alkaline, this is bad. And so give room for bacteria to grow. So if someone has a pH in the vagina of greater than 4.5, it's an indicative of BV. So in terms of treatment, so as always, always start with the non-pharmacological treatment, include abstinence from sexual intercourse during, especially when they're getting the pharma, pharmacological treatment, avoid any kind of alcohol um, and take their medication as needed. We're gonna go into the preventative later on. So as it relates to the medication, the pharmacological, they will get flagell, about 500 milligram POB ideally for like seven days, or, and that's the tablet, or they, they can use the gel. An alternative is a vaginal gel that they will want applicator at bedtime for five days. Here's the thing with the flagell. The flagell should not be combined with alcohol. If it is, they will get the effect of a pill or medication called antabuse. And this will cause severe nausea, severe headaches. So the flagell should not be taken, be taken with um, alcohol. Another medication that they can take is a clindamycin. They can use a clindamycin cream um, at night for seven days, oil-based. Keep in mind that oil-based cream can weaken um, the effect of condoms. So they they should be careful when using condom use other um kind of contraceptive other than condom because the oil-based cream can weaken its use and as again they should abstain from sex while they're taking the treatment this is not a sexual transmitted disease so their partner don't have to be treated now preventative measures Preventative measures, they should wear cotton underwear, they should wear loose clothing, they should avoid douching, avoid using condoms, avoid using tampons, and use condoms um, when um, having sexual intercourse. Again, they should avoid using tampon and use condoms. I hope this video was helpful. The resources from this video came from um, Mary Leak book, it came from also Fitz journal book. It also comes from a book called Primary Care, The Art of Science and Advanced Practice from Dunphy. So in addition to that, there's also a book that is produced by ANCC, which is titled Family Nurse Practitioner, comes from volume two, the fifth edition. I hope this information um, is helpful. Thank you for watching.